Hi guys, Clay Ballard with Top Speed Golf, and today we're going to be taking a look at a web member Matt's golf swing. We're going to give you guys some great feedback on how you can improve your swing, and we're really going to focus in on the hips and the body, and how to compress a golf ball, and to be able to really get that solid contact in the, the stroke. Um, it's not all about the backswing, even though a lot of people focus on the backswing. We'll talk a lot about the downswing today, and what you guys can work on, again, to get that really nice, solid, compressed golf shots. Okay, so to start out, looking really good in the, the backswing. We see the posture is pretty nice. You know, no rounded shoulders here. Pretty nice and balanced from heel to toe. And as Matt's doing his takeaway here, nice takeaway. Pretty good amount of shoulder turn. You know, the club is tracking back on plane. You know, so if we were to look at, at a swing plane from a dress, we were to draw a line from the hosel of the club up through the elbow. You know, he's staying pretty well on plane all the way up to the top of the swing. We pause at the top of the swing. Nice position here. I like how the hands are nice and high. You know, the, the butt end of the club at the top of the swing is a couple inches over his head, so he's getting a nice high hand position, which is really good for power. Uh, as I mentioned, the club is, is nice on plane. The posture is really good. Now, what happens in the downswing that I think he could do, uh, that he could work on to really improve, is how the lower body works and how the hips and the arms work together. So we'll see here as he starts down, as he gets a little bit lower in the downswing, we can see that the, the hips kind of stop on him and they're not clearing out of the way, which leaves very little room for him to release the club. And if we take a look at this position, if we draw a line from the club shaft here, we can see it's gotten very flat and then the hips are stopping as he's coming through contact. If I stop again at contact, we can see here that the hips are pretty square to the ball when these hips should be rotated open about 45 degrees. Now when we look from face on, we're going to talk about how he can actually get those hips to open up. So it's not just trying to rotate the hips farther, it's actually the alignment of the hips with your body and that's what we go over in the compression line in our scratch golf system. So we talk about how we can get those hips to open up a little bit more, how we can get that proper alignment to get the, them to release and then how that's going to affect your straight line release to get the club to go. So if we look at just the backswing, everything's looking really nice and then about halfway down, the hips and lower body are giving you a little bit of trouble and then the club is kind of having to reroute and the hands and arms are having to do a lot of the work. So you probably feel like your lower body is fairly tight in the downswing and then the hands and arms are doing most of the work in the second half of the swing. We got to get that more synchronized where we're not only using the body, but we're using the hands and arms with that. You can think of the, the hips and the lower body as creating momentum and then the hands and arms add to that momentum. Right now, the hips and the lower body aren't creating very much momentum at all, and the hands and arms are having to do most of the work. So let's go ahead and take a look at face on, and I'll really get a little more specific with what we could work on here. All right, so now as we're looking from face on, there's a lot of good things that are happening in the backswing, as I mentioned, from down the line. As you're going to the top, uh, again, before we even start the swing, this, the setup, the posture looks very nice. I wouldn't make a lot of changes there. Grip also looks very nice. Good powerful turn as you're going to the top. Not a lot of extra movement. You can see you got a nice shoulder turn. That's one of the things that we focus in on the power turn section in the scratch golf system. You know, the, the club is, is nice and loaded up. The hips and the shoulders have turned about the right amount there. You could probably get a little bit extra, but that would be, uh, you know, a little bit nitpicky there. I mean, fantastic backswing. I can tell you put in tons of work and tons of time getting it to where it is, which is gonna allow you to be a lot more consistent as you start to build some of the downswing pieces in there. So, so great work on that. The main thing we're talking about here with the downswing is your shift to the left. So if we pause you about halfway down here, let's go a little farther. If we were to draw a vertical line up from the left ankle and it just straight up and down, you would see that the left ankle, the left hip, and the left shoulder are almost perfectly stacked on each other. Now with the driver, when we look at really good players, we look at good powerful golf swings, you'll see that line should be angled away from the target a little bit. So if we took that line and we angled it away from the target, you know, roughly six or eight degrees, then we should see the left ankle, the left hip, and the left shoulder all stacked up on that line. So this green line here is exactly where the hip and the ankle should be. When we slide in front of that line, what tends to happen is that the hips can't rotate anymore and the body can't rotate anymore and our hips and our body tend to lock up a little bit. When that happens and our hips and our body lock up, now the arms have to take over. So in the compression line, 
series in the scratch golf system, that's what we really focus in on is getting that line from the left ankle, the left hip, and the left shoulder stacked slightly away from the target so your hips can rotate. And if you go to the compression line section, section number one, video number two, we talk about the hips and the shoulders alignment and how to work on getting the hips to rotate to where you're at contact, the hips are about 45 degrees open and that allows your body to build momentum. You can see your hips are pretty square to the ball as you're making contact here. So that's the first thing I would work on. Now, as I mentioned, if the hips and the body don't rotate enough in the downswing, then that's gonna cause the arms to try to take over and compensate for that. So you can see as you're coming down, you're losing a little bit of lag here. So the angle between the forearms and the club is already getting lost a little bit. And that's because the arms are becoming overreactive as a result of what the hips are doing. So a very simple change in the hips is gonna affect what the arms, the club, and your, and your lag does. So a great way to pair this up, once we get that compression line in a better position that we worked on in video 1.2, you can actually go to the lag section, video 1.2 there also, section one, video two, we talk about how to get the club, uh, an easy drill I call stick behind the ball. So I'm gonna get do a, a drill with the, the club, getting it to point behind the ball late into the swing so we're conserving this energy of lag. And then from there, we're gonna go into actually again, video 1.2 in the release point, which says that the first time that your club should split your forearm. So here, just right after contact, about a foot after contact, you can see that your club shaft would be splitting these forearms. Now what that means is, it's a carryover from losing a little bit of lag. You're casting the club slightly in the downswing and then releasing the club early as you're hitting the ball. So this club is splitting your forearms here when it should be splitting your forearms for the first time as we're farther out in front. So you see now the club is already fully released and going and starting to hinge back up. It's in line with the right forearm. This is the point where it should very first be splitting the forearms and that's what's gonna allow you to get really, really good compression on the golf ball. When you add those three things together and work on those in the downswing, that's what's really gonna take your ball striking to the next level. So number one, we're gonna work on video 1.2 the compression line and the downswing. That's gonna help us to get our body rotating a little bit more to create momentum so our hands and arms can add to that momentum instead of feeling like our hands and arms are doing everything on their own. The 1.2 in the lag system is gonna get us a little bit more lag with the hands and arms to build on that. And then 1.2 in the straight line release system is gonna talk about how we can release the club properly and that's when you're gonna see the humongous results. When you start releasing that club properly, you're gonna have more forward shaft lean, you're going to have a better release of the club and you're going to have a lot more energy coming into that ball because that club is going to be lagging behind and then really whipping through contact. So work on those three videos. For those of you that are members of the website out there, great videos for you guys to work on. Uh, practice hard on your game and I'll see you guys soon. All right, got a great bonus for you guys that are joining me on YouTube. If you want to build more lag in your golf swing, we all know how, just how unbelievably that important, it, how important that is to creating massive amounts of club head speed. I got a bonus video for you guys. It's going to play here in a second. Click the link in the right hand side of your screen or down below in the description if you're on a mobile device. You'll be able to see that entire lag video absolutely free of charge. It's going to help you build more speed in your game and it's not going to cost you a dime. So good luck to you guys and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag, and then we're gonna to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm gonna talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also gonna give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be 
I want to use the full length of this club to build lag and then release lag. 